Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cinema A to B with Alec. Hey, everybody. And myself. So, Alec, this was a movie that you had, uh, this was a release from last year that you had encouraged me to watch um, pretty early on when we were discussing launching the podcast. And it unfortunately took me some time to finally get it watched. Um, The movie is Bullet Train, starring Brad Pitt, the action comedy. And I have to say... I think I only saw one trailer for this movie and I don't know that they hit the comedy angle as hard in the first trailer as what I saw in the movie. So yeah. you, do you, did you have the same experience? Cause I don't, I didn't watch another trailer for this movie and I think it ran in a movie I saw in a theater hmm. and I was like, Oh, I need to watch that. But then I kind of forgot about it. The initial trailer didn't have the comedy element nearly as strong as what's in there. I mean, this is a true action comedy yeah i the only thing that got me i was i didn't see it a regular trailer i just saw it pop up on my netflix feed and said you probably like this or this like new today or new now or whatever um or coming soon i forget what it was but it definitely hit more on the action like this is an action-packed kind of thing and i remember going in expecting a lot more action but i was laughing a whole lot more when i watched it than what i thought it was going to be i thought it was going to be something like like a Michael Bay, more action film. So instead of what we got, so I was laughing my butt off the whole mm-hmm. time. This is a really, really funny movie and action packed. The action's awesome. The, uh, the fight choreography is, is fabulous, but it is, it is a super funny movie. I hate that. I waited so long to, to watch it. I mean, this is what you get from the guy who directed Deadpool and Deadpool two. Yeah. And apparent, and apparently also John Wick one, though he's uncredited. Like IMDb, he's uncredited. Listen, yeah, mm. and he's also uncredited for Deadpool as well. He's additional director or whatever. So I wonder how much he has added in um, to those. But it, it's funny because I hadn't really known when I was like taking a look at his IMDb profile, and I was like, wait, he did John Wick one, but then it was like uncredited, and so I was trying to have to dig a little deeper into that and follow that mystery out of what what happened there. So no, it's. It's absolutely. Oh, it's great. It, yeah, it's an absolute blast. I I had a fantastic time watching this movie. It, initially, I thought the budget would be lower because I was like, oh, it's it's all on a train set. Maybe they um, maybe they saved a bunch of money and they only had to pay for Brad Pitt. And no, ninety million. Yeah, ninety million dollar movie, and I think it did okay. Um, but I don't think it. I don't think it did well enough like they wanted it to for, for there to be a sequel. Cause I think the goal was there would be a, almost a comedic counterpart to John wick with, yeah. with Brad Pitt. Um, I don't think that's going to happen, but no. as a standalone, it's totally, I, I recommend it. And, and yeah, like we've, like I've said, it's much, much funnier than the, the initial marketing led on. And I think, I think some time passed and they realized, Oh shoot, we, we better market this as mm-hmm. more of a comedy. Cause that's, it's really a comedy with with action rather than an action with comedy. I think. Yeah. Well, and it's got an okay story. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I wasn't blown away. Like, oh my goodness, it it. I felt like it really tried to be kind of like a Guy Ritchie film, you know, where you have yeah. all these loose threads, and then they connect at the end. Um, that didn't hit like a Guy Ritchie film does. Like he, there's something that Guy Ritchie does that just, you know, his writing, how he gets everything together, just or just makes it feel better. This was good, but didn't have that same payoff. Like there was a couple good moments I really enjoyed, but it def it, it, but it was a lot of fun still like this. That is not to don't watch it, but it's not the caliber of say a guy, Richie film of the connections. And- no, it's, it's close. And there's the, the two character, the two British characters, Tangerine and lemon oh, are the closest fantastic. you'll get to, to a guy, Richie film. Oh, they were, and Aaron Taylor Johnson. And then this Brian Tyree Henry are absolutely hysterical. I mean, I think mm-hmm. most of the, I'd say about 80% of the comedy for me is those two and their, their banter back and forth is, oh. is just great. The, and the Thomas the, the Tra- other, Tank engine. Oh, sorry. What was, oh yeah. No, no, yeah. absolutely. That like, was just fantastic. Oh, f- it's brilliant. Throughout. It is brilliant. And, <laughs> and, and they just squeeze every drop from the Thomas, the tank engine reference throughout the movie. It's peppered in perfectly. And it is absolutely hysterical and they don't overdo it like they definitely 
are – while you said like they did it kind of with every angle and they really pushed it, they didn't – it never felt like, OK, this is a bit that needs to go away. Like they would let it go. Um, and then they made it more integral into the story later on you know, with like the oh, stickers yeah. and stuff like that. Like we're actually – it was a callback, but it wasn't just a funny callback. It was actually an important callback. Oh, yeah. No, it, so, went, from a, it went from a funny callback to a dramatic callback. Yeah. And which so. is – which is really nice. Now I did notice watching it. I didn't, I didn't read any of the backstory before I watched this. I really went in as much of a, with a blank slate as I possibly could. And it didn't take me more than 20 minutes in. And I was like, this has to be a graphic novel. It does. That inspired yeah. this. And it, it, it is, it is. And it, it's a, it's a Japanese graphic novel. It's, although I'd say the movie is way less Japanese than, than maybe they even intended, but mm that kind of is going to tend to happen when you cast Brad, Brad Pitt in the lead. So, but I don't think it loses anything. I mean, it, it's still, it's still very Japanese. In fact, I'm, this isn't really related to the filmic nature of the movie, but I'm watching the movie and the entire time jealous is all get out of Japan and these bullet trains <laughs> like yeah. I, that. I can't travel the United States like this. Like I'm just, Oh, I'm, I'm like so frustrated. Like this is, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Um, really, re- finally a movie not afraid of of a color palette. Yes. Oh, my for goodness. crying so, out loud. Some of those scenes, I mean, like he was like neon colors and things of that sort, too. Just like everything was washed in color, like like skin tones were washed out in color, mm-hmm. like all of this. Um, and it worked. It really, really worked, especially for the different trains that they were in, the different time you know a time of day that they were in it just it it was beautiful to watch like i really enjoyed kind of seeing all of that oh and i'm looking it up so this is not off the cuff right like i yeah i just had to confirm cinematographer uh his name is jonathan sila or sela and he was a cinematographer on john wick which makes uh, total sense total yeah. sense like it has it has and deadpool too yeah Okay. Yeah. So it's um, the same kind of team that's so yeah, and he's mad. not afraid. He this guy's not afraid to uh, to have really nice color and mixed mixed lighting, a lot of neon, and obviously it works. You're on a Japanese bullet train; it's perfection. So yeah, really beautiful, beautiful movie. I'm just I'm grateful I've got a stinking projector in my basement that I can watch something <laughs> like this back on that I didn't, you know, because yeah. I was kind of kicking myself. I was going, yeah, Ben, you probably should have seen this. Um in the theater, like you would have really enjoyed this in a theater, but I've got a pretty close experience here. I mean, it's not the best, but it's certainly better than, than just a regular old television. Yeah. And yeah, I, I was, I was having fun start to finish cool movie for me with a lot of really nice performances from some up and coming actors and actresses that I just didn't know, you know, this Joey King that plays Prince. Yeah. And then, and then like I mentioned, Brian Tyree Henry as lemon. Oh, are scene stealers and they more than hold their own against, you know, Brad Pitt. And, um, now who's the guy I recognized him. Oh yeah. The guy from last samurai. Is that what you're talking about? The, the father Hiroyuki Sonata. I was, yeah. yeah. And I was so excited to see him. He was perfect. Now I do have a casting complaint though. Uh Oh, (laughs) So they're hyping up this white death and you don't see him. You just see him as a younger man and he's like, you know, he's six, five and he's super jacked. Yep. <laughs> and then I get freaking Michael Shannon. <laughs> who I, In a robe in like a bathrobe. <laughs> who I have a love hate relationship with anyway. I mean, I don't hate Michael Shannon. I mean, the guy gets a lot of work, but uh, th- that's not who I would have cast as white death. I mean, you hype this character uh, up and then really you give me yeah. Michael Shannon, like in an even older version of Michael Shannon than he really is. But it's like Michael Shannon's never been yoked and jacked in any movie he's ever been in. And suddenly I'm supposed to believe that this is the, yeah, it was super let down. I, I don't know if that was the intent that it was like, he wasn't actually as cool as the myth that had been built up. Maybe that was their whole point. Yeah. But if that wasn't the intent, total miscast. I could I could name several other actors I would have rather I've seen in, in that role. role. 
I don't dislike him. Like I know you, I know your love hate relationship for him. I don't dislike him. Um, I think he's actually an excellent actor. He does a great job. I wasn't as disappointed with his reveal. Like I actually felt kind of like, huh, okay, yeah, a little weird, weird actor for kind of a weird thing. I mean, he definitely played up the weird part about it far more once you've seen him. He like he lost a lot of that cool of him, you know, becoming something. But you know, that could also just be talked about of once you get into power, you can let your, you know, eccentricities just kind of flow and just do whatever and people will say yes to you. You know, like the Prince effect or whatever. You just do whatever you want. And because you are in power, people will do things for you. And you kind of lose a little bit of yourself and a little bit of your coolness or your ability to see reality. But I don't know. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I I agree with you. I think no, there's better no, people I mean, who would be a little bit more commanding or a little bit more intimidating. But it's a minor gripe at the end of the day. I mean, it didn't. It didn't take me out of the movie. And and he yeah. wasn't bad. He wasn't bad. He was good. Um, I just thought, I thought there was more potential there from casting a different a different choice of actor. He definitely wasn't scary. Like one, once once I saw it was Michael Shannon, I was kind of like I lost a lot of like and maybe like that said, was intimidation. Maybe that was the point, right? Maybe that was their goal was that in life, these intimidating characters are created and then you meet them and it's never quite what you mm-hmm. had in your mind. So if that was the creative choice and I've not read the graphic novel, so it's entirely yeah. possible that his mythology was much bigger than the actual man. And so if that's true, then then Michael Shannon's probably fine. The, the things that I kind of like were weird choices to me that I, that I felt outside of Michael Shannon was the wolf and then the Hornet of just how like short of a time that they really spent. Like, like they were not really in the movie much. Like it almost didn't need them. I'm like, you needed them for the story and stuff like that. But it was like, why introduce them? Really? The only reason to introduce them is to connect these dots. And that's where I feel kind of where it missed a little bit from like a Guy Ritchie film, like every kind of character that has a backstory or whatever, for the most part has some additional purpose or some more connection as opposed to just, Oh, this person connects these two characters. Right. So that was, I felt like it was a miss that, you know, again, not a miss, but just a wasted opportunity of to grow these characters. I really was interested in the wolf. I mean, we got a whole backstory about him and then, you know, he didn't really do anything. So, yeah, and that must that must be fairly true to the the graphic novel cuz graphic novels tend to have these off little offshoots of yeah. for a few pages that kind of just fill in some back detail. But you're right, it when a Guy Ritchie film does kind of an aside, it tends to carry more weight later. Yeah. The other movie that this reminded me of early on, and it's this this movie Bullet Train's way way better. But it was another movie with a lot of action, a lot of blood, tons of characters, probably too many, which was uh, Smoke and Aces. Oh, yeah. That had way too many characters. Yeah. It, but it reminded me a little bit of Smoke and Aces, just the, the kind of the gigantic. Uh, and, Huge ensemble oh, trying to yeah, big ensemble together. piece. together. Yeah. But this was a much better movie. Smoke and Aces is an absolute mess. It has its moments, but it's pretty yeah. messy. And. Yeah. And then Smoke and Ace is just is a cameo fest. And this really wasn't like, um, except for there were two that I really, I really <laughs> loved because <laughs> I, I loved seeing and spoiler alert. I yeah, loved spoiler. seeing Channing Tatum. Yep. And then I love seeing, uh, Ryan Sandra Reynolds. Bullock. Oh yeah. 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 Oh, who's, I'm, who's the other one? Ryan Reynolds at the end. When yeah, he, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I expected Ryan Reynolds character carver to show up more like Mm. i was waiting for him at the finale to just show up somehow and he never did no but um yeah that whole (laughs) whole (laughs) that guy's an asshole (laughs) yeah is a really funny recurring joke but there is a um apparently because the only reason i know this is because i saw the other the other movie with the three of them was with sandra boy channing tatum yeah the lost city yeah and so they must they must have gotten on really really well like mm-hmm. they must be friends. Cause that's the only way this happens where Brad, then Brad Pitt's like, Oh, why don't you guys, why don't you guys drop cameos in, in my next film, which I love. I love yeah. that. Right. Well, and fun fact, when uh, the book Channing Tatum is reading is one of Sandra Bullock's characters book from <laughs> the lost city too. Like, so it's kind of fun. Like these little nods, like these little inside you by, know, jokes. By the way, just a quick aside, 
the Lost City is completely underrated. Yes, like it, it, it was like really completely enjoyable. underrated. Very, very funny movie. Gwen and I had an absolute blast watching that movie. Yeah, Laura um, and I did too. Yeah, it's it's a good. That's a good date. That would have been a good date night movie for people. I think uh, the Lost City. But yeah, I, I always always appreciate that. You know, Hollywood's a small town. Not everybody gets along, um, mm-hmm. but when they do and they hit it off, yeah, that that tends to happen. You get these fun cameos in each other's movies. And that one was a really nice callback. Good catch on the novel. I didn't realize that's what he was reading. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I didn't catch it. Sorry. Oh, you didn't I, catch I, it. I, no, I read about it. Someone, someone posted something about it. So, yeah. yeah. So I like, not that good. Like, but someone was like, oh yeah, if you, he's the book from the author from L- the lost city. And I was like, that's a lot of fun. Um, I did enjoy, uh, you were talking about you know some of the cameos and stuff like that. Like they weren't heavy handed. Like it just felt right, and they felt they were used just enough. Um, and then they left; they were gone. You know, it wasn't you know Sandra Bullock's you know voice throughout it, and then when she appears at the end, great. Channing Tatum is just there, just for a hot little joke section, and then they don't they don't go back to him, so they don't feel like they need to keep these people around. But it's I like they, I didn't recognize Sandra's voice. I didn't know that was no. her. At the beginning of the movie, I had no idea who that was. Yeah. I, in fact, I didn't even expect to see them. It, it wasn't even a thought in my mind that I would see who his handler was. No. But it was it was perfect. I was like, oh, that's that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Because yeah. who I doesn't think. like Sandra Bullock? I mean, I'm sure I'm I mean, sure somebody doesn't, but I I I love her. <laughs> I, love I do her. prefer the 1995 crime drama Heat over Sandra Bullock vehicle The Heat, just so we're all aware, you know. So sometimes I don't love her as much as other things, but you know, uh, she is great. She is great. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad we're at a point of Brad Pitt's acting career that he can take on these different roles, these fun roles, these enjoyable roles that can are not his normal. I mean, he's always had some funny characters. I mean, true romance. He was absolutely stole the show in for his like five minute little like intros, the druggy roommate or whatever. But, you know, he definitely plays not a type, but a different, like a style of character. And especially in the last, you know, you know, five to 10 years, he's kind of breaking out of that mold and playing some more fun roles or making fun of himself or just not trying to go for that Oscar. You know, he's just kind of, Let's do something because this looks interesting. This looks, looks fun. And he's kind of doing a bunch of different areas. He works because even though he's older, he, you still, because he's always kept himself in such good shape, you, you mm-hmm. still buy the physicality. Like he's still yeah. able to be relatively convincing with, with the physical nature. And this, and this character does carry a lot of physicality to him. So that works. And there's only probably a handful of actors his age, around his age, that could have played this. And obviously you wouldn't, I don't think Daniel Craig would have ever even taken this because he's just too close to the Bond character. At this point, he's like, "What? What's the point?" Right? I don't, I don't want to play that. Yeah. But this was a nice. To me, this felt like a fun callback to Mister and Missus Smith. Mm-hmm. To his care, it's almost like an older version of his of his character from from that film. And but yeah, I I love his whole the fact that he's just come out of therapy and <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's an absolute riot. Like yeah. the whole, the whole pursuit of Zen mm-hmm. and, and then obviously the, the film's whole message on, on fate and especially karma. Karma mm-hmm. just seems to be the overriding theme and I, I'm here for it. It was, yeah. it was fabulous. There's some brilliant payoffs with karma throughout mm-hmm. the movie up to the ver- up to the very end. Yep. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> um now Aaron, I do want to talk a little bit about Aaron Taylor Johnson cuz okay. This cat is just quietly building a really nice career. I mean, I the first time I saw him was in Kickass. And he was super oh, that's young. Right. But and then he, you know, he was in Tenant mm-hmm. as kind of a a more minor character, but you can, you can tell, I mean, he's, this is the guy that's rumored to be the front runner right now to play bond, to uh, play James Bond. I don't he's, know. That. He's, I was, yeah. He's, he's number one right now, as far as the, those, those online kind of Bitcoin betting sites on mm-hmm. who, the, who the next James Bond is. And he's already taken multiple interviews and I, it seems he fits the bill. Cause you see, it's like, you've seen him in things before, but he's not big, but he's not real big. 
but, and he can physically, he's going to be able to pull it off. So uh, I, I would be good with that. And, oh, I, and he did most of his stunts too, apparently. Oh the, yeah. No, the, he's very, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's been doing his kind of his own stunt work in most of the stuff he's been in. He, he does bring a nice physicality to the role. So if they, if they opt to pick him, it'll be different from, from uh, Daniel Craig, but he won't lose any of the physicality. Like he'll just, he'll be every bit as physical with James Bond as you saw with Daniel Craig. And he's, and what's funny is he's fast talking too. You know, he was, he was the one, obviously he plays mm-hmm. Tangerine and he is the closest callback to a Guy Ritchie character as you'll see in the yes. movie. <laughs> but and the, I'd and be the okay camera, with that for Bond. Yeah. And the camera I, loves him. And yeah. no, I think he's, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw him and if, Let's say he doesn't get the Bond role. It would not shock me if you see him be a lead in a in a Christopher Nolan movie in the next mm-hmm. five years because he tends to bring you in for a lesser thing and then and then give you the lead later. Or something if, else. He, so, if he likes you, obviously, yeah. With Leo, I guess Nolan really just didn't didn't like working with him. So it's never, is that true? <laughs> no, that, that's the running oh, joke. Just, no, so no, no, that, no, just yeah, the, yeah. the fact that he was only in the one. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, but also I guess you, you got, could say the same thing about Matthew McConaughey. So exactly. So, yeah. but also, you know, you're, you're talking about main characters, you know, though, I mean, he's brought Christian Bale back for mul- multiple movies as one of the main characters. So it's that's because Christian Bale is one of the best actors of his generation. Hands down. Yeah. And is an utter chameleon in anything he's in, but no, this, yeah. Aaron Taylor Johnson's got a bright future and, and, um, he obviously isn't the lead in this, so I can't call it his, uh, Oh, what was what was the film Daniel Craig did before he? Oh, Layer Cake. Oh, this layer isn't cake, yeah. this isn't Aaron Taylor Johnson's Layer Cake necessarily, but it's a nice uh, it's a nice role in the pocket for a lot of physicality and quick talking and kind of you know slick threads that he's wearing and. I- and- and I'm totally okay with changing up James Bond. I mean, look at the difference between Pierce Brosnan and Daniel Craig. I mean, they they're going to have to. Very different people. In fact, yeah, I've like, got a, th- I have a theory on, I have a whole theory on what they're going to do. I don't want to necessarily get off onto a tangent in this episode on, on where I think James wow. Bond's headed, but um, I've got a whole theory one. of where, where they're going to take that. Um, maybe we can we'll talk about this on off, offline, do a little special, a little quick, you know, three minute Ben's idea for Bond. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll leave that alone. But any, uh, any last nuggets of wisdom on bullet it's, train no just if if you like action comedies it's enjoyable like this is a, just a lot of fun it's not going to be anything crazy it's not you know it's not like a film of you know that you know the people like talk about there's a difference between film and a movie i mean this definitely goes more towards movie you know with those people's uh classifications so but see it watch it it's on netflix so if you you have it and it's still a great date movie. You can still do some uh, Netflix and chill. You know, if that I think that term is no longer um, in the mix. <laughs> I think it's way, way too old. Uh, it's bloody and it's hilarious. So what yeah. are you waiting for? Go see it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for catching us on another episode of Cinema A to B. Again, uh, you can follow us on Instagram and the Facebooks at Cinema A to B. And then the, uh, the audio only podcast is available pretty much everywhere you get podcasts. If you've got a, uh, yeah, if you've got requests for movies, s- shoot us, shoot us what they are. We, you, uh, we won't guarantee we'll do it, them. but we, we will heavily consider it. As long as it's not CSI. No, we already talked about that. Not, we're not doing CSI in this podcast. Is there a CSI, the movie yet? No, there's not. No. Okay. No CSI. No CSI. All right. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody. <laughs>